So let us be very clear about this. There is no evidence whatsoever that the Trump team surveilled or spied on, was, was spied on illegally. There is no evidence. I've been watching the unfolding Susan Rice scandal with a great deal of interest as I believe it represents another huge milestone in the mainstream's media's slide into irrelevance. It also demonstrates once again that when it comes to media and persuasion, Donald Trump is like nothing we have ever seen before. Watching the legacy media pursue him reminds me of the way Elmer Fudd tried to hunt down Bugs Bunny, although arguably Elmer had more success. To begin with, let's just acknowledge that legacy media is doing everything it can to undermine President Trump. The thing though is that, unlike past Republican presidents, Donald Trump accepts this reality and doesn't pretend it's otherwise. So, if you're Donald Trump, what do you do? Likely, you give your opponent, in this case the mainstream media, every opportunity to devalue their brand even further. You perform a little mental jujitsu and use the media's hatred of you to unbalance and destroy themselves. How Donald Trump has handled the Susan Rice scandal is a textbook example of this, which we will now explore. To those who follow Trump with a persuasive eye, the pattern is the same. The first step is to issue a wild or seemingly irrational statement. In this case, this occurred on March 4th, when Trump tweeted that the Obama administration had wiretapped him. This leads into step two, as the mainstream media is thrown into a frenzy as they try and debunk this claim. In this case, the media went into overdrive as they are still determined to protect former President Obama no matter what the cost. They did this, though, even though they had to ignore much of their own reporting, such as when the New York Times reported on wiretap data being used and Evelyn Farkas admitted that she urged the intelligence community to pump out classified info about the Trump team. Time passes and Trump, plus the mainstream media, convinced they have him, bite down on his hook even harder. Then step three occurs and new information comes to light which somewhat corroborates whatever Trump initially said. In this case, it has been revealed that Obama National Security Advisor Susan Rice unmasked American citizens and associates of Donald Trump who are not part of any ongoing investigation. As Andy McCarthy of National Review put it, Understand, there would have been no intelligence need for Susan Rice to ask for the identities to be unmasked. If there had been a real need to reveal the identities, an intelligence need based on American interest, the unmasking would have been done by the investigating agencies. The National Security Advisor is not an investigator. She is a White House staffer. The President's staff is a consumer of intelligence, not a generator or collector of it. If Susan Rice was unmasking Americans, it was not to fulfill an intelligence need based on American interests. It was to fulfill a political desire based on Democratic Party interests. This brings us to part four, which is where their nothing to see here narrative blows up in the mainstream media's face. They can then do one of two things. The first option is to ignore the new facts and hope no one notices the gunpowder on their face. This is what Don Lemon is doing here. The second option is to attack the new information. In this case, it's by splitting hairs and employing euphemisms in an attempt to contain the damage. So, for example, the mainstream media will claim that this still doesn't prove that Obama himself ordered the surveillance. To the vast majority of the public, however, Susan Rice was Obama's national security advisor. It is a distinction without a difference. The other is that what occurred wasn't wiretapping or illegal. To most Americans, though, it sure looks fishy. And if Susan Rice had done the same thing to them, most would consider it spying. If George Bush had done the same thing to the incoming Obama team, what do you think the media's reaction would have been? And so this little saga ends the way most Bugs Bunny cartoons do when he tangles with Elmer Fudd. Bugs Trump gets away, and Elmer Media stands there looking confused as to how he missed getting that rascally rabbit again while his credibility continues to crater. It appears as if the mainstream media just can't help themselves, which will ensure their continued demise.